Christina, I'm sorry. Okay, so everyone's on. We're so excited for um, that you're all joining our inaugural craft and wine class. Um, I think most people know me and Aaron. I'll do a really quick intro. This is my husband, Aaron. Uh, my name's Gina. We own Wine Cult. And um, we are a small online wine club and shop that features uh, sustainably farmed and made uh, wines. We do our wine club is kind of our main. Um, oh, that's okay, Jerry. No worries. <laughs> um, is our main thing, but um, everything that we don't sell in a wine club, we do recycle back into our wine shop. So we have this really fun, eclectic uh, collection of wines from now all over the world. Um, yeah, uh, we just we really focus on working with uh, boutique producers who have you know sustainable practices. Um, that's really you know our our passion and our focus. Um, but as Gina said, we now have a pretty wide range of uh, of wines that we've represented and worked with. So uh, we also just launched a brand new website that I encourage everybody to check out. <laughs> we'll stick that in the chat. Um, but yeah, so just to give everyone a little um, uh, itinerary of what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna not talk about the wine first, but I will help, if, if you haven't opened up the wine, I've saved mine to open up um, in case anyone needed. I know the crown cap kind of confuses some people and I just wanted to give you confidence. So I'm gonna do that in a minute or Aaron can do that um, in a minute. But uh, I wanted to say that we're gonna hop pretty quickly into one element of the craft because we need the glue or that we need the paint to dry. And then I'm gonna go in and um, talk all about uh, this fun wine that we're gonna be tasting. And, um, and then Melanie, uh, if, if anyone hasn't met Melanie before, she is one of our wonderful friends, Rory, her daughter is there and Ryan, is Ryan gonna be popping on too? Oh, hi Ryan, <laughs> Ryan's hand. Um, they are club members of ours, but um, that club met or that membership turned into a really fantastic friendship. And we have been doing all kinds of fun virtual tastings uh, privately for Melanie's large, Ryan and Melanie's larger group of friends throughout COVID. But so this is our very first public tasting where we are featuring Melanie's crafting genius. So we're so excited to officially be partnering with her, which is so much fun. Hi, Rory. Yes, Rory's very, she just discovered those puzzle pieces, so she's very excited, but she's confused, like, why, like, she's like, wait, am I putting these together? And I think these are, like, three different puzzles in here, so just, word to, you cannot put these puzzles together, because you guys all kind of have a conglomeration. But yes, hi, welcome. Um, I, like Gina said, we did one other crafting um, and wine uh, uh, mommy, tasting. Mommy. Uh -huh. Uh, they not fit. Yeah, they don't fit together. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Daddy will get you a different puzzle you can actually do. Um, so anyway, so the first thing, basically, we thought it'd be fun to involve the kids, but I was gonna say, I have my kid here. Feel free to unmute, jump in with questions. This is super casual and we chose an easy, Gina and I chose a really easy craft. So it's really like, you really can't go wrong. Um, but so yeah, like like Gina mentioned, just what we're gonna wanna get started really quickly. You guys all have three kinds of paint. And I will just say this is acrylic paint. This is not for the moms and dads. This is not washable tempura paint. So if your kid has a super expensive outfit on that you, I would maybe put something over. Kim's like, eh, it's fine. But yeah, so um, well, I think- Really quickly, before you dive into that, let me just open up this wine. Does anyone, has anyone, has anyone not opened up the wine? Looks like everyone. <laughs> So I'm just ignore me. Um, we'll get this wine in a minute. Go ahead. And um, Gina, I was wondering. I don't think Kristen is on here. I'm wondering if I should ask her the link or if I could message yeah. her the link. Wait. Um, okay. Sorry. I'm definitely with her. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna have Brian get my phone. I'll just message it to her in case. Um, but anyway, so what we're gonna want to do is you're going to want to. Choose a sampling of different size pieces. These are really tiny, and some of them are much bigger. Um, and so you're just going to want to kind of choose a mix of each size and then start painting them on um, one of each of these three colors. And if you want your, um, if you want the wreath to be more pink or more red or more white, um, just paint more of those colors. I also think I gave everyone 
probably too many pieces. I aired on the side of over instead of under. So um, you could always paint like half and then decide how many you want. We're also probably not gonna complete the whole craft today because it might take a while. But just start, um, it's pretty easy to use that. Um, it probably only needs like one or two coats. And we just need to paint one side, right? Yeah. And, and really probably either side, I'm wondering, yeah. Um, I'm wondering which side works better. I was gonna do this beforehand to see. I'll probably the side that doesn't have the puzzle on it, but work better, but you could kind of decide if you want, if you wanna do multiple coats, it probably doesn't matter. This is also gonna be messy because these are small pieces. Um, but yeah, so just start, I would do one color at a time and then you can kind of let it dry a little bit and then probably wanna add one coat. This is just one coat. Um, the best way is usually to let it dry a little bit before you put on another coat or it'll just get all globby. Um, but yeah, so the goal is to just paint as many of these as you can, which is a, I personally find activities like this quite calming. Um, but yeah, so it's a good thing to do. Um, kids love paint too. So Rose, do you want to paint some of these? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Gina to talk about the wine. No, 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 no. I can't tell you. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna mute. Uh, I have a really quick question on this, Mel. Um, the the white is this glue or is this? Paint? No, this is paint. That's okay. paint. So all three are paint. Excellent. Um, okay, I'm gonna get Aaron in on this craft. Aaron, you can start painting, yeah. and oh, I will start chatting about this wine. So. I'm sure you have all tasted the wine by now and you're thinking, this doesn't taste like wine. What am I drinking? And why did Gina make me buy this? Um, I have many answers to those questions. This is, it is a, it's technically not a wine. It is technically a wine byproduct called Piquette. And if you have looked at the, I'm going to give you a lot of terminology here because there is a lot of, um, really interesting, you can use any of these colors, um, really interesting things to learn about winemaking. So I'm gonna go over to my notes really quickly. So I'm gonna start off by talking a little bit about the winery. Um, Old Westminster Winery is located in Maryland. We have never featured a wine from Maryland other than this one before. Um, I was initially drawn to it because how cute is this label? But of course, we care more about what's in the bottle than the label. Um, so then I tasted it with one of my friends who sells this wine and was just blown away. Um, I personally am really drawn to a lot of the really kind of outliers in the wine world because I've been working in wine for close to a decade and I do love me some gorgeous classic Pinot, but of course it's really fun to kind of experiment and try things that are um, pushing the boundaries of what we think of as classic winemaking. This is of course one of them. So um, a lot of people think that really only California, Washington, and Oregon are wine producing states, but there is actually wine being made in all 50 states. Um, I read an entire hilarious book on this guy. I'll come up, I'll have to think of the name again, but he took a 50 state tour and visited at least one winery in every single state in the United States. So we have, that's not to say it's all great, um, but I thought that this was uh, a really fun example of wine coming from outside of California that isn't in a usual wine producing state. Um, so Old Westminster Winery is uh, all family owned. The brother, um, his name is Drew, he's the farmer. They do have a small kind of like backyard farm and vineyard. Uh, his sister Lisa is the winemaker and their other sister Ashley, she's the general manager and runs the tasting room. And 50% um, of the grapes that are used in their wines are um, produced from the grapes grown in their backyard and then they blend in 50% from other vineyards that are local. And they do focus on sustainability. They're farming, they're not certified organic, but they do farm using organic practices. And um, the, everything that they're all about is, you know, you what you put into the earth, you should feel comfortable receiving back, um, which I really love. And uh, they do about 2,500 cases annually, which um, is not a lot. That's very small scale. So I'm really excited to be able to have access to this wine. I actually recently tried to purchase another case 
and they are completely sold out all over the United States. So we're excited to have gotten this little sampling. And um, I do have about 10 bottles left in case you're in love with it and you want more. Um, I do have a tiny little bit left, but um, yeah. <laughs> I thought Natalie would like that, this wine. <laughs> Gina, I also, I'm gonna interrupt and show people. It makes the cutest, it's so cute as an empty bottle too. Like we just have it, we put this little light in it and we just put it on our so counter. Cute. The empty oh, bottle mommy, makes it really mommy, cute. Mommy. Yeah, what's that? It, it, it's what I like. Yeah, it's a rainbow. The other thing is Rory decided to make mix red and white and make her own beautiful shade of pink. So Okay, hold on. It reminded me that you can mix all these together if you want to make different colors. Like if you want more than three shades for the wreath. So Rory made this like kind of. Oh no, I'm gonna put this back. Like it's pretty, oh, pretty. kind of like a salmon. It's a light on. I think but, yeah, so eating the crafts, not you, Mel. Hey, I know. All right, but anyways, I interrupted you, but I I think the bottle is delicious, but I just love what, the bottle itself is just so cute. Such a cute bottle. Melanie, you, you caught me off guard there. I thought you were saying uh, that you guys were mixing red and white wine there. <laughs> so, as I say, Rory is ahead of her time. <laughs> I mean, who knows what she's going to be when she's older. <laughs> Yeah, next time it'll be a family-friendly wine blending shop. The kids can help blend and the adults will taste. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> All right, but Gina, back to you. I just wanted to interject about how pretty the model is. Yeah, um, so, and yeah, again, I just want to remind everyone that there. this is so casual. Please interrupt me. I will, I'll be very excited if you have a question or just a comment about anything right in the middle of any of this. So please, um, please feel free to interrupt and ask questions. Um, but so now you know a little bit about the winery and then I wanted to go into some um, details about this specific wine. So specifically, and I love that they actually put um, the full breakdown of what's in here, but no one really knows what Verjou or Piquet Blanc or Piquet Rouge are. So I'm gonna tell you, um, this is 55% Verjou, 35% Piquet Blanc and 10% Piquet Rouge. Um, Verjou is a very acidic juice, not alcoholic at all. It's made from pressing uh, unripened grapes. And uh, in all of my research about it, it's actually used more often in cooking than it is anything else. Um, so you see it a lot in mustards and a lot of French cooking. And um, it is a little fizzy as well. So uh, that's Verjou, that's over half of what this is. So it's and very highly acidic. And um, they specifically use this uh, pressed grape juice, acidic pressed grape juice uh, to balance out everything else that's in this wine. So what's next? Piquet Blanc and Piquet Rouge. So Piquet is literally what this is. Um, if you asked for a Piquet in the store, well, very few stores would have something like this, but you would, they would know what this is. So I thought it was really confusing at first when someone, when I was reading the breakdown and it said Piquet Blanc and Piquet Rouge. But so that brings me into what is Piquet. And Piquet is a juice made from water that was added to pomace. And the definition of pomace is the pulpy residue and uh, residue remaining after fruit has been crushed in order to extract its juice. So back in terms of winemaking, you press all of the grapes to then remove the what's eventually going to become wine. What's left is that pomace and that's all of the seeds, stems, skins of what isn't going to be used in traditional winemaking methods. So um, people in France and Italy started using this and re-fermenting it. They added water to rehydrate it. And then they added the verjou, which is that acidic. And then they added a little bit of honey or sugar or whatever other, like whatever other sugary substance yeast might like to add. Then they add more yeast and then it goes through this kind of re-fermentation. And then they capture it in the bottle, put the cap on, which is exactly why it's a little fizzy because it's still going through that fermentation while it's in the bottle. And it's so fun and so yummy. It's kind of kombucha-like, it's kind of pet, pet nat or petiant natural-like, um, and it's just so juicy. Another one of my favorite things about it, and one of the reasons why I put it in this tasting, is it's extremely low in alcohol. 
Um, peat cats are normally four to 9% alcohol, which is like kind of on par with a beer and um, really great for drinking in the afternoon, which is what we're doing here. <laughs> um, also great breakfast wine as well. Those are really pretty, Erin. Erin's also using Rory's tie-dye, different paint colored blend. It's really mm -hmm. beautiful. My, my favorite part of these types of tastings are invariably the doing the child crafts. <laughs> um, I'm just like channeling my inner four-year-old. So uh, you're doing great, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> hey, Gina. You see, my niece is the little mini me in training. Oh, yeah, <laughs> girl. That's how it's done. It's down. <laughs> well, she well, has an amazing aunt. She <laughs> her ways. Um, I will also go ahead, Mel. Oh, well, so when you were talking about how they add the grape juice, so is that why this is less alcoholic? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's also because you're not actually using you're using a lot more water and then they use the, the verju and the sugar or honey and um, the, the re-fermented pomace as a flavor, but it's all, initially, there's a lot less sugar and a lot less yeast added oh, to it, which is why you want to wash your hands? Um, and yeah, I think it's another really interesting thing about this type of, or there's a lot of interesting stuff about this type of winemaking, but one of them is that the, the, now that it's kind of starting to resurface, this used to be like the classic drink that uh, winemakers would make for their um, harvest crew. So this is what they would drink during lunchtime, super easy. They're reusing a byproduct. They're not wasting anything um, in the vineyard. They're not drinking the fine wine that they're making. Um, but it is definitely, uh, it kind of disappeared and now it's resurfacing. So um, you can find different forms of piquette in almost every single European winemaking country, um, which makes sense because they've been doing it a lot longer than we have. And they've, they've got these little kind of like wine hacks. And I love that we're starting to channel them and um, really kind of touch back to our roots. And based on that, I thought it was really funny because this is like the, like, not fine wine at all that would just be drank by like the farmers. And now, of course, it's this like cool, trendy kind of bougie wine that people are drinking. Um, and it's, it is really fun because you can make this with every single type of grape variety that is out there. And then just to get back to the difference between Piquet Blanc and Piquet Rouge, Piquet Blanc would be made from the pomace of white wine grapes and Piquet Rouge would be made from the pomace of red grapes. Red, white, French. Um, bacterial infections can occur super easily in this because it doesn't have that really hostile alcoholic environment. So that's why, it's actually why they started reintroducing just a little bit more sugar and a little bit more yeast, which does make the um, growing alcoholic environment within the tanks to uh, protect from any bacterial infections. But um, so obviously we're not, we're not drinking a, an infected wine. This is really yummy. But um, let's see. Uh, Mel, any craft updates? Should we be doing anything else in this moment? The key thing is just getting the paint on the puzzle pieces to the, like the thickness and the color you want. It's, I'm, depending on the color, it's definitely taking a few um, coats. And I'm noticing Kim and Eddie and crew have like a very, I'm liking the assembly line. What did we, what did you guys, I know you're muted, but can you, you guys have a very good technique going on there. Uh, each, each person did a color. And now I'm just doing like the second coat touch-ups. Uh -huh. for, for, the, for, the, for the record, I was not trusted with a color. Mommy did pink, I did, and I did, White and I did to add all the white. Mommy did all the white. Mommy did all the pink. I, I didn't do all the white because you did a lot of white, yeah. I did a lot of white and Letty did all the red. Perfect. I love Can it. You it. How you did it? Yeah. Uh, I just uh, I, the rest of the way I just stick them on and that it worked. Then uh, before that I just uh, painted them like a. 
Oh, yeah. Does any um? And I Dark. tried both sides, and I definitely would say the the cardboard side works better. Um, getting the color to stick. But yeah, so yes. this is the main. Oh, and the red actually might yeah. only need one color. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I think the main thing is just getting these pieces painted and then having them dry. And we're hope we're gonna hope they don't take forever to dry, but then we also do have the kids craft um, that I can talk people through as well. That one's a lot easier than this with all the paint. But, but yeah, did anyone, um, before Gina goes back, did anyone have any questions about either the adult line or the kids? It's a sparkling soda or what is, Am I jumping ahead, Gina? I can't remember. No, I, I'm actually not. I figured the kids weren't very interested in what I had to say. So I yeah. did not <laughs> prepped for this. It is, it is, however, my go-to non-alcoholic uh, something fun that I can add. I get a lot of requests for like gift bundles or, you know, whatever. These private Zoom tastings where some people aren't necessarily interested in drinking wine, but still want to participate. And this is my go-to a uh, non-alcoholic beverage of choice for um, anything having to do with wine cult. It is 100% uh, Italian. It comes from a very small family owned Italian deli that is literally just around the corner from mine and Aaron's house. They don't make this, they just sell it, but um, they oh, love you. He eats all of their sandwiches. What? Do they, uh, does Aaron have a classic Aaron uh, tasting note about this? <laughs> oh yeah, do you have an Aaron tasting note about the, the adult, the Piquet? Oh, I was thinking about the, the kids wine, but. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I could give you one about the kids wine. I was thinking like we should open that, but um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in love with the Piquet. Uh, the thing that I love about this, right, is it, obviously it's got a very like musty nose to it. Um, that's the thing that I, that was first jumping out at me. And when Gina first poured me this wine, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Um, I knew nothing else about it. I didn't know that it was so low in alcohol. Um, but like that, uh, that slightly yeasty, musty thing on the nose makes a ton of sense considering this is essentially coming from rehydrated grapes. Um, I keep wanting to say second press uh, and I'm not sure that's the right language. Yeah, yeah Gina's shaking her head. No, that's, it's not, but um, it's part of what helps me conceptualize like how Piquet works. Um, mm -hmm. There's also like, there's a very nice kind of like shot of sweetness here um, and that I was, I was thinking is really more like honey than honeysuckle. And it's not, it's not intense, but it's definitely there. Like bright acidity with a little bit of honey. Um, Ryan, I could smash so much of this. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so light and low in alcohol and just so interesting. It's it's another, that's another thing that drew me to this. And we've since, since we've been introduced to this, we have had a couple of other piquettes and I do plan on bringing more in and it's just a little bit harder to find. <laughs> this, this is still my favorite. Yeah. Um, it's just so, it's so interesting that I find myself kind of, I'm not a very fast wine drinker, but this, I really, it's, it's literally chuggable because I keep, I'm so curious about the flavors and it's just so interesting that I, I do find myself going back to it more often. <laughs> so every time either one of us uh, refers to this as like breakfast wine, I, I have I have had this experience of simultaneously being like, oh yes, that's so descriptive. And oh geez, they're gonna think we have a real problem. <laughs> oh, we call it breakfast wine too. Breakfast, it's definitely breakfast. Yeah. Or I would even say this is like pregnant or like pregnant wine <laughs> it's like this would be a great bottle to give to a new mom or like new parents like to like when they're just home with baby like breastfeeding mom hasn't had much wine yet like I think this would be the perfect bottle for that so I need you to find more of these because I have like eight pregnant friends I am on it I will I I'm your lady um Mel really quickly did Kristen did you message her is she yeah I know I mean she has multiple kids so maybe they just are gonna do it on their own yeah cool yeah no worries um Allison can I ask you a question are you in I know you're on mute I'll give you in a second yeah 
you said that you have, so for anyone who doesn't know Allison, Allison is another one of my partners for a different series of virtual tastings that we've been doing. We take you on um, trips all throughout the world and talk about uh, specific wines from one country per virtual tasting, but she is an extremely talented wine writer and knows far more about wine than I do. She has been around in the industry for a very long time. And she told me the other day in preparation for this tasting that she'd never had a piquette before. So I'm wondering in all of your experience with weird wines from all over the world, how does this stack up? Do you like it? I do like it because it's very, very, very low in alcohol. So it's, you know, like you said, breakfast wine, although it, that never scares me. <laughs> really in the We're morning. in the industry, you know. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm probably going to sneeze and I don't want to get paint on me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I love it because you get kind of the fruit, but it's not fruity. Yeah. And I really am going to sneeze. Excuse me. Bless you. And I, it kind of reminds me of grapefruit in a way, like a sour grapefruit. And it's just kind of fun because it does have this kind of earthy character to it that has me drinking more. Yeah. And, and it's a good thing you had one for kids because my niece really likes wine and she would be drinking as much as she could. <laughs> I think she still thinks that she wasn't supposed to drink a whole glass of the other one because she looked at me every time she took a sip. <laughs> That's so funny. She's like, am I doing something wrong? You've got a future, yeah, future wine industry person right there. <laughs> That's right. Um, so speaking of kids, Mel, I don't want to interrupt the craft flow, but I'm just curious, um, when are we going to start the kids craft? Do we need to start that while? I mean, so that is super, that'll be super easy. So what I'm thinking is everyone, I'm looking, I don't, we've been slower than probably everyone else. Cause, um, but our paint probably needs like another, I'm going to have Ryan do a Mel? second. Oh. Mel, how many um, puzzle pieces do you recommend us having in the end? All of them or? I mean, so here, actually, that's a good segue. So um, what you're going to, it's going to depend how kind of wide you want your, um, so this is, so you guys all got a heart. Um, and so I've cut out a center of it so that I have kind of like a, um, a wreath frame. So if you're going to want it, I did it pretty skinny because I, I want it to be a pretty skinny wreath. But if you end up making it chunkier, um, you'll definitely probably want all the pieces. And it depends. I'm looking to see. I don't let me take some of the dry ones. It's, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the once they're all painted to your liking, you're going to just kind of glue them on like um, over each other. So if you're going to want them really on top of each other, you're going to want more pieces. But if you want them more spread out um you're gonna want less and part of the reason why i did a red backing is so that if if you kind of want some of that red through to come through you can if you want to totally cover it you can um and i would recommend once we get to the gluing part i would rec definitely recommend having the bigger pieces in the back and then the little pieces are just kind of for accent um because some of these are pretty tiny you can see so those clearly would take forever to cover up the whole back um, but yeah, I would probably paint most of them because I imagine it'll, and then you can always do more. Also, like I said, this is probably, um, you'll probably start it now and then can finish it when we're done or tomorrow or whenever you see fit. Um, but yeah, so while Ryan's doing the second coat, I can definitely pull up the kid. I'll pull up the kid one and then Gina, you can. Um, then we could go and talk a little bit about kind of like the difference between, because you haven't talked about that yet, right? I was very deep in painting. <laughs> no, I wanted to not overwhelm anyone. I feel like this is so fun. I didn't want to like, yeah, away from no, I love it. So, craft. so the kid craft is super easy and it's actually a really cute kit I got at Target. Um, if anyone doesn't buy their craft kits, they're my absolute favorite. Um, but so basically, for the kiddos watching, you're going to end up with a robot that looks like that or however you see fit. And um, so you each kid should have like a rectangle and then like a square. 
Rory, do you want to make a robot? Or are you good? Okay, come. So you're going to put the square on um, the bigger body and there should be, a, um, I would just use the glue stick or any sort of glue that you have. And then each of these little, came with these fun little accordion things, which can be used as the arms and legs. So you just kind of fold them. You okay? Sorry, bro. But yeah, so that you just kind of fold them into fours. And then one of those is the uh, uh, two of them are the arms, two of them are the legs. Again, the kids, it's really up to what you guys want to do, but these are supposed to be the feet. So you should each have two little feet. And then these are the hands. And then you just use the stickers and the eyes. And yeah, so it's pretty self-explanatory. But um, the big diff, the big thing is that everyone should have two of these kind of half circle feet and two of the funny arms, but you really could use those for either of them. And yeah. So I will show the picture again. And it's supposed to go like, like the head is the square and then the body is the rectangle. Yeah, and I think it shows the head being like kind of glued on the behind like this, but you could also do it. You want to build a robot? Okay, come on. All right, Rory, can you show everyone how to build a robot? Rory has pink paint in her hair now. She's got like Valentine's Day hair dye. All right, come on, what's up? Oh, we will get a glue stick. Yeah. Can you tell everyone, Rory, what are we drinking? What are mommy and daddy drinking? Wine! And water? But yeah, so that's that's the main, I think those are the main. Yeah, these are the stickers. Ryan's getting her a glue stick. So yeah, if anyone has any. Yay, I Perfect. But yeah, so um, does anyone have any questions about the puzzle pieces or anything else? Because we're getting to the glue stick. Um, it should be pretty, yeah. So because basically if your pieces are dry, um, you can start, which most people's probably aren't, but ours look like they might be soon. Um, once your pieces are dry, you can just start using your glue of choice to just start gluing the puzzle pieces on um, your heart. And the way I cut the heart out is I just folded the heart kind of loosely in half no, and then not cut working, not working. and then cut um, however you want. And you just kind of want to go in the same shape oh. as um, the heart. You can also kind of freehand it and then cut it out that way, but it's easiest to fold it. So yeah, I think, there you go, good job. Uh, so I will hand it back to you, Gina. Um, I had a question, which is, do you think this has a lot of residual sugar? Because it doesn't taste like super sweet to me, the piquette. Like, oh, you're muted. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a really good question. Um, I know that sugar is added, but I believe it taken all the way through a fermentation, which would lead me to know there's probably not a significant amount of residual sugar. Um, just a fun fact, even though 99% of the wine that we drink is dry, even if you think that you're asking for something sweeter, 99% of the table wine that we drink basis or whatever basis you drink wine on is, um, is completely dry, but there oftentimes is a very, very tiny little bit of residual sugar left over. And um, the winemaker, he or she can really determine when to stop that fermentation. Um, I'm not sure on this wine. Um, that's a really good question. I, I do believe that if there was a significant amount of residual sugar, they would have noted it because that seems like it would be part of the style. But even though there are some kind of like more fruity or um, fun kind of honeyed notes. I don't perceive a significant sweetness. Like I'm thinking like 
like a dessert wine, like a Tokai or a port or something like that, where there's obviously like a, a candied um, kind of like caramely sugary note to the, some of those wines. Um, but that's a really good question. I will, I'll try and find that out because a lot of, and this is actually a great kind of segue into different kinds of sparkling wine. And I will actually tell you the different levels of sweetness. Um, so there is sparkling wine made all over the world. Classically, you probably think of champagne. That is the, everyone's kind of first go-to think on, thinking of sparkling wine. A lot of people actually call lots of different kinds of sparkling wine champagne. Um, but an interesting fact is you can't legally call a wine that you, a sparkling wine that you produce champagne, unless it's made in the champagne region in France, made specifically with, um, one or all three, a blend of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and a third grape called Pinot Meunier. So that is exactly champagne. It is made in the uh, method Champenois style, which is a method that was perfected a long time ago. Um, but then there's all kinds of other sparkling wines made from all over the world, um, notably Cremant, which is also made in France, um, but those can be made from anything else. Um, last night we were, we were drinking some Chenin Blanc that is, uh, made in the Loire that is also known for some fantastic lower priced sparkling wines, um, made specifically from Chenin Blanc. Um, then you can travel over into Spain. That's Cava. That's another style of sparkling wine. Then you can head over into, uh, Italy, um, or more specifically Prosecco, the region. Um, a lot of people think that the style of um, the, the grape itself is called Prosecco, but it's actually called Glera, G-L-E-R-A. And, um, and that's similar to Champagne where it's not Prosecco unless it's made in the Prosecco region, um, with Glera. Um, but then there's Sect, which is from Germany. And then, um, you come all the way over back to the United States and we just call it sparkling wine because we don't have a specific region that we are making a specific style. We kind of have no rules out here in the wild, wild west, and we do whatever we want with any kind of great varieties that we want, like this piquette. Um, with sparkling wine, what makes it sparkling is uh, the winemaker will make their base wine, which is basically just a still wine, like any other normal table wine that you drink, um, with whatever varieties that they're interested in using. And then they, um, will add and then it's bottled and then an addition of a mixture of uh yeast and sugar and a little bit more wine as the kind of liquid that's mixed up and a tiny little dosage or addition um, of that mixture is added to each bottle it is then capped also with i'm looking for my crown cap but i can't find it also with a crown cap um, which is, and then now I'm explaining the method Champenois style. So we're going to, um, we're going to stop halfway through this conversation. I'll tell you about a different wine and then I'll finish because there's two different styles, depending on where you stop in this sparkling wine production method. So the crown cap goes on and then it's left, um, to itself to re-ferment or go through the secondary fermentation. And um, that's exactly where you get the sparkling, the sparkles of sparkling wine. It's all cap, it's all trapped in the bottle. And um, at this point, if you're gonna continue making champagne, uh, the bottles are then flipped upside down, stuck in a riddling rack, um, which is holds the bottles at oftentimes a 45 degree angle. And um, someone called the Riddler, which makes me laugh because it makes me think of Batman. Batman. Um, the Riddler, they, their sole purpose in life is to tiny, make these small little spins of the bottle. So the yeast that is eating that extra bit of sugar that was reintroduced into this wine as it's dying, it heads right into the little crown cap of the bottle. And then um, at that point, then when it's ready and when it's finished fermenting uh, or going through the secondary fermentation, the winemaker can then um, remove that yeast, put the cork in, the classic champagne cork in the bottle, and then it, it's champagne. There is no yeast, it's perfectly clear. There's no cloudiness, like there is a little bit in this piquette. And that's champagne. So I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna rewind it take you back just a little bit. 
at that crown cap point before the, the Riddler comes in and fights Batman. Um, <laughs> there's kids, I can be more funny. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, wine, the, the wine is stopped there and the crown cap stays on and uh, the wine remains cloudy. There's that yeast left in the bottle and that's called Patient Naturel or Pet Nat, which is made in the Method Traditionnel style. And that's basically like the traditional, I'm sorry, method anc ancestral method, which is the very first way that anyone made sparkling wine. It was a complete accident. And um, it's got, because it has that yeast that remains in the bottle, it has like a slightly yeastier, more like brioche baked bread type note. That is more on par with this piquette that we're drinking today. Um, because it's more rustic, it's not refined, it still has that yeast, um, oftentimes lower in alcohol because it doesn't continue on fermenting um, in the way that a champagne would. And um, yeah, so those are, I just kind of went, took you on a journey of all kinds of different sparkling wine. Um, oh, and then just to finish up, oh, look at that beautiful robot. Good job. Oh, so cute. Good job. I love it. Rory's is a little more avant-garde. <laughs> Very well, Picasso. Picasso. <laughs> Actually, this is, I'm going to, we can talk about wine forever, but I'm so curious. Um, what is everyone's names? We didn't do this earlier, but um, would all the kids be interested in sharing maybe their craft so far and um, introducing themselves? Patrick, do you want to start with your kids? Hey there, this is, uh, what's your name? Austin. Austin and Olive. Olive. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you. Here's Olive's uh, robot. Love it. Aww. And then you saw Alton's. He's he's not too shy about that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Work, Alton. Thank you. I actually was wondering what to do with the third heart, and I love that you put it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, your, your family, Katie Grassini. Yes, yes. I, I, we saw, um, we did a blind wine tasting, a virtual blind wine tasting with them on Tuesday, and I totally spaced on yeah. thanking her for recommending so. um, you coming to this tasting. So I'll put it off. Yeah, no, it's but I'm so happy. Are you fun. up in <laughs> right now at the cabin? We're up in Mammoth, yeah. Nice. That's it. That's it. So nice. I dumped about a foot of snow in the last couple of days, so it's been nice. Yeah. Oh, so jealous. Where do you guys live normally? You're you're in LA. No, we're in Santa Barbara. We're up in the Midwest. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm sure we probably ran into you. We go to you know lots of events. We have to have met each other on accident. Yeah, I, I need another car. Um, Kim, Eddie, thank you. Kim and Eddie, what are you guys? What uh, I have never met your children before. For as many. Oh, were we off mute all the whole time? Oh wait, go ahead. Can you introduce yourself? Um, I'm I'm Daisy. All right, Lexi, go ahead. Show. Tell them your um, name. Uh, my name is Alexi, and uh, uh, his eyes are under this heart, and uh, and I uh, and I glued these on, and uh, I uh, put it in over all of these other hearts and uh and i uh put it these uh here do you want me to hold it up so they can see it a little closer yeah <laughs> you, why don't you tell them about the eyes again and they were uh behind the heart oh, and, I like uh, it. Uh, uh this heart on a uh, rest on the rest of everyone mm -hmm. Why don't you show Very me good. Connor and Mom uh, gave me uh, some of Connor's and uh, I put it on here. Yes, Stop talking. talking. <laughs> okay, yeah. but now we're getting Connor a turn. Um, you have to tell him your name first, okay? Um, I'm a little um, dizzy, but um, what I got so far is um, um, I have um, and I think I can't hold it up right now. No, no, no. So I think I gotta get this arm on. Okay. Why don't you tell them your name? Why don't you tell them your name? My name is Kim McCurden. How do you hold it up? Nice to meet you, Connor. 
Oh, it's so And great. Lexi just had her birthday. So Lexi just turned four. Happy Your fourth birthday. Day. Yeah. Tell them anything about your robot. Um, my robot um actually has gears that have eyes, so like the gears can see what they're doing. <laughs> I love it. That's so future cool. engineer right there, Kim. Uh, all right, Jordan. How about you guys? Jordan and kids. And crew, you got a whole. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch it. What was that? I was just wondering if your kids wanted to hold up, or you wanted to hold up your crafts and show us your progress. We're all over the table right now, and the kids are. Everything is lit. <laughs> yeah, everything is everything is lit. <laughs> the kids have abandoned the band adult We have three kids and five adults here, so. <laughs> And, and Jordan is in um, Colorado, but she we grew up together in Santa Clarita, so that's yeah. And, yeah. We're, we're here Actually, yeah. Four yeah. yeah. of the five adults are from Santa Clarita. Yeah. So our friend Amanda went to high school with my husband Jesse. We all went to Hart, and then Kristen here is uh, a family friend that moved in with us in August, and she's also from Valencia. So Valencia. oh yeah, and Dina, you met. You we met Jordan because we brought Jordan to Soul Miner. I think yes. we still worked there. Oh, that was so yes. long ago. February 2019. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The kids were much younger then. <laughs> well, Rory was like, she was like six months old when I met her. First met her. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, or was, was it even younger? I remember being so impressed because you're like, basically just gave birth and you're like, we're out on the town drinking wine. <laughs> Which I love. That's how I plan us. Drinking time. drinking wine with a six month old is so much easier than drinking wine with a three year old. <laughs> and also it's so much easier than not drinking wine. I went on like a girls trip to slow with him like five months old and two of my like best friends from work and like we just cruised all over the wineries and like I had like you know free babysitting with me. It was fabulous. Oh last year. No, it wasn't at that point anyways. Right? <laughs> yeah, wineries are like I think wineries are why Rory is good in the car because she got so used to driving left to Los Olivos. So she can do two hour drives like no big deal because we just did it practically like once a month when she was little. I love it. Allison, what about your niece and nephew? Um, I am with my niece and nephew who, are you going to show your face, Reese? Now you can introduce. This is Reese. Oh, that's her friend, Raindrop. Oh, Reese, you got to point your face in so they can see you. Hi. <laughs> so Reese is three and a half, almost four. That half matters. Yeah. And when she's four, she's going to Disneyland. For the first right? time? Well, it's been, it was supposed to be for three, but it's been closed. Oh yeah. So, and That's why be open. when you're four, it'll be open. Yeah. God willing. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, bud? Look in there. What's your name? Harrison. Hi, Harrison. And how old are you? Seven. And oh, a half. Right. And a half. He lost his first tooth a couple weeks ago. Which one? Oh. Point it out. All right, a bottom one. <laughs> Did the tooth fairy give you a bunch of wine? No, what'd you get? A four lollipops and a two dollar bill. All right. <laughs> That's pretty good haul. Like, like pennies. <laughs> two a two dollar bill, you know. That's pretty special. <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> quiet <laughs> so we're still painting we're gonna do the robots afterwards because our hands are very yes yes there's my hands are still like um pink so does anyone have kim are you guys dry i was kind of slow so ours jerry are you gonna show your face and introduce us to your nephew <laughs> i know yeah, we're like not even close to dry come here come here can you say hi Oh, oh, Aiden, say hi for me. He's really Aiden, being oddly shy. He's hiding under the table. People get 
people get zoom shy we did a zoom birthday party for rory and she was like why are all these people staring at me yeah and it's the same child that likes to sing in the mirror instead of brush her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so come here well i'm gonna show um i'm no. just gonna do this actually with some blank puzzle pieces uh just to show you guys because yeah the this was the one thing i was worried that the painting it might take you because you do want to do this with them pretty dry so you may want to do the gluing part of this in um after we uh end because i think this stuff is okay, okay. might take too long but i'm going to just show you guys the rest of the steps we're going to okay. jet thank you guys Enjoy, my Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye. So yeah, so anyone, like I showed before, for anyone Bye. wanting, you're basically just going to cut <laughs> like this. This is just my extra one. So I'm. you may want to pay more attention than I did. But yeah, so you end up with this, yeah. and this will be your backing. Um, and then you're going to glue everything. Um, so if you take ideally a glue gun, but um, it could also be like craft glue, like something like this. Elmer's glue might work in a pinch. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. And so you just put the glue gun or the glue, and then you're just going to kind of like cover nice and easy. I love easy crafts, but you're just going to cover the whole thing um, with the puzzle pieces. And if you can, you can see with the glue gun, this is like almost instantly glued on and it's not falling off, which is really nice. And even though this is pretty, um, this is just cardstock, the puzzle pieces themselves should give this some heft, um, which is what will let it kind of hang. And then this is pretty self-explanatory too. I like to tie a knot at the bottom of um, this so that you have something to kind of glue. And then you're just gonna glue that like to the back at, I would probably do that at the end. Um, and if you have other string or ribbon that you want to use instead of um, the twine, you can do that as well. And yeah, you're just going to kind of, you, you're going to use the glue gun. I will show you guys. Be careful not to burn yourself like I have done many times, but you're just going to glue one side and then the other. This is also just a really good framework that you can pretty much use for making any sort of homemade wreath. It's really fun activity with kids um, for different holidays. So you can just buy like cardboard or even use like the back of a cereal box and cut it into a shape like a circle. Um, most of you have probably done even like paper plate crafts um, that you can cut out and make that a wreath as well. But you could glue anything on here. You could glue little um, like sweethearts, on here, like candy sweethearts. You could glue at Christmas. You could glue little, um, uh, what's it called? Can like candy, like peppermint candies. You could glue, what else could you glue? Anything. You could glue <laughs> pom-poms. I made a really cute pom-pom thing at Christmas, but yeah. So this is what you're gonna just get the, when your puzzle pieces eventually dry, you will glue them all around like so. And then, it's really up to you whether you want to add um, the little um, like banner up cross that says love you to pieces. I'm going to grab that paper. So while Melanie's doing that, I have to ask Kim and Eddie, what system are you guys using that is like zooming and adjusting your camera <laughs> as you're hanging out? I'm so fascinated by this. It's a, it's a Facebook portal. And it, it has like a what it has a, it's got like a wide view camera, and it just the software tracks where you are in the room and zooms in and out. We we bought it for ourselves and then the grandparents because I don't know if you know this, our kids don't stand still for terribly long, so it makes like their video chats with grandparents much better. Yeah, we used to so, never be able to keep the kids in frame. Is it is it just software or is there a piece of hardware? No, it's like a big oh, screen. It, it, it is, it is a piece of hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a big. It's kind. Of, it's like an Amazon Echo, sort of, but a little, little bit bigger. Does it attach to your laptop or your computer? No, it just has its own screen and camera and. 
Oh, wow. That's, That's awesome. So yeah, cool. I really won't. Yeah, highly, as long as you don't mind Facebook, you know, watching everything you do all day, every day, I highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, someday you guys are going to end up on like, you're going to realize that you agreed to like be the poster family for Facebook and your like yeah, personal yeah. chats are going to be like commercial. You're going to, yeah, you're going to end up in the next commercial. Be like, hey, look at this Valentine's Day uh, crap that you did. <laughs> Look at all these fun people. That is that is far from the most embarrassing thing they could capture on this video. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, as you can see with this piece that I glued, like it's super secure. So um, definitely, I would highly recommend the glue gun if um you have one. And then um, for anyone who did who saw the posting, Gina had a picture of the wreath. You're just going to use the white cardstock. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to put the sign on mine, uh, but if you want to, you would just kind of want to cut as straight as you can across. That actually might not be big enough. Okay, so you're going to want to cut the other way. So up and down um, this way and as thin or as thick as you want. Yeah, that's better. Um, and then you can make like on the thing she did, she did it so that it had cute little, um, like she did little arrow, um, little like this. I don't know what word that would be, but she made the cute little like banner kind of edge. And then you're gonna make the banner and then you can just kind of what she did is she just kind of glued it. Yeah, so you just, if you just kind of fold it like so, you can make it almost like three, um, you can almost glue it on like 3D so that, or so that it pops out a little bit like that. Oh, uh, yeah. And then um, I think, yeah, so she wrote, the one who did the tutorial wrote, love you to pieces. You could write, you know, happy Valentine's day. You could write XOXO. You could write, I love wine. You could, um, you could even make this like you could even if you wanted to be super fancy you could even paint this with chalkboard and then have it be like a chalkboard uh so that you could write different things on it uh, i would recommend probably using a thicker thing if you were going to do that but yeah so i love gina actually found this craft and i love it it's so i love easy crafts like i feel like this is a really nice one that you couldn't really it's kind of hard to screw up so um once everyone's yeah, so our pieces are finally starting to dry a little bit, but you'll see it'll be really cute. Does anyone have any questions specifically about um, the craft or how to keep finishing it? I'll also, G Gina, we can send out after this just like the tutorial for anyone um, in case anyone gets lost uh, finishing it up. Yeah, but I love this. I'm excited to finish this. I think we'll probably finish ours tomorrow um, when everything's super when Rory's more into it again. Yeah, and this is a, a good part. I mean, we are right exactly at the hour and this was intentionally to be family friendly. So if anyone has to go, I know that kids sometimes get bored and aren't interested anymore. You're welcome to pop off. Um, I'm gonna stick around because I'm enjoying the chat, but um, if anyone has to go or, or needs to go, that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Does are, are some of our pieces are, Aaron got a little crazy. He was doing like full on, thanks Jerry, see you soon. Um, Aaron got into like splatter painting. So now we have like big. Ooh, wait, I wanna see, I wanna see one of the, I like the splatter, that's cool. I wonder if I can, I can get this like. Oh no, you're gonna get, you just painted your pants. Bummer, vertical <laughs> enough. Whoa. Whoa. So Give you get the, the right amount of paint and flick it onto the, the paper. But Gina's right. Yes, I painted my pants. <laughs> All right. Well, I did that last Christmas. I decided I was Picasso and I painted our curtains with wood stain. And wood stain does not come out of curtains. So we've got some nice Someday whoever buys our house, there's like some little brown dots on the white part back there. Wait, from I, got, I have to show you, I don't know if you can see, but Harrison did a multicolor three color rainbow. Whoa. Whoa. I like that. Yeah, I like people are getting into it. That's awesome. He's getting a lot of two tones and three tones in there. Yes. I dig it. 
Um, yeah, I realized I accidentally did that because I left the pink paintbrush on one of the red ones. So <laughs> that was not intentional though. Melanie, but yeah, I need you to revisit the pink, your curtains, why and how and where did, what? I'm so confused. Right, you can see viticulture just on our table from last night. <laughs> can you see, wait, can you see that? See, there's like, I've tried to paint over them with white. Oh, like you accidentally stained them and then you were, oh, I thought there was like a cool crafting technique where you can like- Oh, no, 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 them. no. I just, I was sitting at that chair painting and got like, was drinking a little too much wine, decided I was like this amazing painter and realized that I was just flicking the wood <laughs> tint onto our white curtains. We didn't discover it until like a few days later and yeah, not ideal. I did that on accident one time. I was a cheerleader in seventh grade and we were making banners for the football players and all we had was Sharpie pens. And so you can actually flick paint out of the Sharpie pens but I was wearing my brand new, like expensive cheerleader jacket and realized quickly after that I had splatter painted an entire sleeve on my cheer. They like hadn't even worn it before that time. My mom was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crafting comes with, it's, you know, I usually end up some causing reason. something. <laughs> still oh, Kim, I, yours, yours dried, look at that. That's so cute. Oh, I love it. It's not totally dry, but I'm just, you know, getting paint all over my fingers again. So it's fine. Yeah, I was thinking I might just start doing that. Erin, I love that you're into crafts. Erin <laughs> was really, um, he like fought for the, the adult craft last night he's like so what are the crafts that we're doing and I was like I was about to say it and he's like no I mean like what's the adult craft that I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like Aaron you interrupted me and I'm like yeah 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 get to the adult one get to the good stuff <laughs> oops oh maybe when you start doing this don't have wet Kim how are you not getting paint on like I picked up a red piece and got then got red paint on the white piece I just keep like wiping my fingers in between every okay that's smart. that's smart I'm picking up the ones that are more dry than others yes mm -hmm. I feel like we had some that I thought were dry but I guess not mm -hmm. one okay, is one me, oops sorry one I can oh one. yeah yeah I know something about the white paper Oh yes, so the white paper is optional, but basically if like on the listing on the website, the, the puzzle has like a sign that says like, love you to pieces. So you just wanna cut like a strip that's the width of the, and it should be a little longer because you're gonna fold the edges and then you can just cut like little triangle out on both sides. I only, so like that. And then you just kind of fold it however you want, like to make it kind of 3D. I, oops. And you want to do, yeah. So then you can like glue it. So you have this cute little like kind of banner. And then you would glue it. This isn't quite, bit, well, this isn't quite. Yeah, so then you would glue it like across like that. And then you can write anything on it. You could write happy Valentine's. You could write love you to pieces. You could write um, any XOXO. You could write goodbye 2020. <laughs> could be oh, Valentine's yeah. Day 2021. Virtual Valentine's. Um, yeah. It's awesome. awesome. We were really cute. I don't I don't know what I'm missing, so <laughs> sorry we're being loud. <laughs> oh no worries. Full house. <laughs> I feel like crafting is supposed to be loud anyways. Well, so pre-COVID, I used to have like ladies craft nights at my house um, with where we would do things. And so it's been fun to be able to try to, like, I've just missed that. So it's fun to do it virtually. Are you guys going to do another watercolor one with your friend, Gina? Yes. Um, we're actually on March 12th, we're doing a, a watercolor with Chelsea, watercolor and wine with Google. Um, 
So we are working that out. We have a ton of people doing that. So I, I told her I really want to do it again, but I, I told her I'd let her get through the Google instruction first and then we'll do another one. But I was thinking probably like May or something like that, to give her a little bit of time. Um, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, we'll do another one of those. Um, I would love, let's brainstorm and anyone can pitch in. What's another fun like craft idea that we could do for this kind of class again? I feel like those terrariums I sent you could be cute. I did, it's not totally a craft. I did a like charcuterie board layout thing. Ooh. If you know anybody who knows how to do those, that was super fun. And then I had food to eat while I was drinking. It was great. That's actually a great idea. Like build your own. That's a fantastic idea. Mel, super you fun. You know, I'm sure. I bet if there's tons of people in Santa Barbara, probably that like the people that make these boards, like those cheese board companies. Cause yeah. I feel like I'm not, I have tried, I've like watched the like Instagram accounts where they do that. And I feel like mine never turn out. I mean, I can do it, but mine never turn out. Good as it was super cute. It, it, Melanie, I think it was somebody local to Santa Clarita. It was like through some group that Stacy's involved with. So oh, like, no fun yeah. anyway. that would be fun, Gina. Yeah, I, I, I'd be into that. I love the, like, all these ideas because that just means that, like, we all get to, like, play around, you know? Well, and we're still really trying to, um, Kim, we're still really hoping to do a murder mystery one. We just have to convince the person who had said he would write it to write get it. on his butt and write it. <laughs> I think I need to start that group text because yes. I'm so like I don't want to force anyone to do something. He keeps saying how excited he is, but then I don't want to like pressure him. Like you know, COVID. I don't. I haven't. This is the most creative thing that I've done. <laughs> I think yeah, this is turning out super cute. But yeah, I was thinking that terrarium idea I had seen could be fun. Um, the only thing with that is like being able to like get those to people, the actual like glass part. Um, oh, I mean, I have all those like packing, like that, yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, those are cute. I would like, I would get a bunch of extras of those and like just hang those in my windows, you know? Yeah, that would be really fun. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely, I will definitely do some brainstorming. I have one friend who is hoping to join, but she literally just had a brand new baby, but she um, is hoping to join next time. So we'll have to, yeah, so if anyone has names or anything, um, we'll have to brainstorm. Yeah. Always open to weird, crazy requests. Wait, Kim, you need to show yours. Yours is like almost done. Oh, wait. I'll show when I'm, when I'm done. I'm still trying to fill in some of the small pieces. I think ours is still too wet. And there's just like glue stick strings everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know we just have paint all over our counters, but luckily it'll come off. Mel, where did you find all the puzzle pieces? Did you just like destroy? Some uh, Target. Them? Target had them in the like front section. Um, they were just selling pieces of puzzles? Or no, they were just selling lots of puzzles. Oh. I was like, what did we know? <laughs> yeah. I was originally trying I was originally trying to find these bigger ones, and that was the hardest thing to find. Um, because the dollar store usually had them, but they were like all out. So that's why we ended up with the some of the smaller pieces. But I feel like the smaller pieces are kind of fun. Some we are actually oh. headed to a second virtual tasting in like 50 minutes so we're having a valentine's day virtual tasting <laughs> extravaganza <laughs> i think our child gina we actually could probably go i think our child is mad at us for for some reason she's like pouting on the couch. That's now, what, ta what tasting are you off to? Uh, uh, Rebecca's at Bouvet, Bouvet and Vintage. Oh, what, yeah, what's she doing today? Oh my gosh, she's doing this is like the craziest thing. She, so, it's like mm -hmm. a 
music. It's like a music and wine pairing, and um, with cheese, music, wine, chocolate, and cheese pairing. With nice. Kala, Allison, you probably know her. She's doing it with Kala from Five Senses Tastings. I, I don't know them. I know, I know Rebecca, but I don't know Kala. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought they started at four. Are you just popping in late? There starts at six. Oh, I totally thought theirs was at the same time. Oh, that's called Love Unlocked, right? That yeah. Really fun. Yeah, Talk it should be. Yeah, no, it's funny, Allison. We met Gina first, but then we went to Rebecca's wine bar because they had Soul Miner on the menu. And we were like, oh, anyone that has Soul Miner on the menu must be cool. And then Rebecca was like, oh, they have the nicest tasting room manager. <laughs> She's great. But I just glued it to the newspaper. There you go. Oh, there we go. All <laughs> right. Oh, that's super cute. Kim, it looks exactly like the picture. It looks I think like I'm going to put a few more like small ones in, but I'm going to like pare down on the hot glue everywhere. Yeah, this is how far I've gotten. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Melanie, when you cut out the heart, you just took scissors and cut out the center part? Yeah, right. so basically, it, the best thing is to just fold it and then just kind of do whatever. And you could really, you could do it thicker. I wouldn't do it super thick, right? but you could do it. This is pretty thin. Um, so it just depends. And then you can also, once you have the base of the puzzle pieces, then you can kind of glue them off the side too. So, but yeah. And then the, and then what was the white paper for? Just the just to cut off the white paper. Strip. You're gonna yes, yeah, so you can cut like a strip and then okay. cut, like little bag ends. And then you just fold it kind of like a like a you to like to make it like a little table. Uh -huh. And then you would glue gun it on and then write whatever you want on it. Okay. So that's optional. I almost think I might leave it without. I don't know. I'm debating. I'm afraid I'll just mess that up with my handwriting. I know. That's the thing. You could also, though, you could get like sticker, like there are like those cute like letter stickers. Or even you could get like Scrabble tiles. <laughs> Not well. Glue those on there, like the ones we used at Christmas time. I actually think I have some leftover Scrabble tiles, so I might do that. What was the the what was the um, Scrabble tile ornament that we were making supposed to say? <laughs> I think it was let it. Uh, it depended oh, on what the no. per, I. Some of them were like let it snow. Some of them said like um, merry and bright. I think. Yeah. We, so Kayla and Tony, our friends that were with us, they all did not what it's supposed to say. They like Scrabble tiled it and mixed up the letters. And do you remember what they were? It was like, told you. Can't remember what they were, but they were really silly. And like one of them was like wine time now, or like they mixed up all the letters. Nice. I'm impressed with their ingenuity. <laughs> oh my God, our pieces are finally drying now. Wine slots was one of them. Oh yes, I remember that. Yeah, that was a while ago. Well, this was so much fun. We should probably jet to get very happy before we hop on our next one. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Also, don't feel like you have to leave because we're leaving. But does anyone have any last questions about the craft? No. We say, say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank we're we're going to let it dry and we're going to. Thank you. We're going to finish it and we'll send you a picture. Yes, please do. That would awesome. be awesome. Please post it, post it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Bye, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, kids, dinner. Bye, guys.